Hi everyone, welcome back to the uh, Matter of Britain page. Um, so today we had Martin back to talk about um, part two of his series of presentations he's doing. Um, so he, he went on today to talk about uh, some more stuff with Thornborough Henges and, the, and his uh, Ripon Cathedral hypothesis, which uh, very much includes um, things to do with the, the procession of stars and um, alignments, more alignment work and, th and things like that that he's discovered uh, through his past few years of research. Yeah, it's really great to see him look at the wider area and some more sites and how that fits in uh, with the Yorkshire star map, some more henges, <clears throat> some mounds, and of course, as you say, Ripon Cathedral. Uh, yeah, it was great, and I really hope you folks enjoy it too. Enjoy. And that's it. Right. Okay. Right. Right. So this is, as it says here, part two of uh, the Yorkshire Megalithic Complex. Um, so today we'll be talking about a place on the map and a cathedral. Uh, maybe a bit about the Great Year. Maybe we might drop that out. <laughs> uh, but we've got some fairies and werewolves and a bloody big stone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good start, I think. Sorry. Excellent. So I'm talking to you from the stage research unit, which is uh, on the um, bed of an ancient um, uh, Ice Age lake in the English Midlands. <laughs> Story so far. So... We talked last time about the uh, Yorkshire Megalithic Complex uh, and the place I started with it was the Devil's Arrows. Now, I quite like this picture, actually, because that uh, stone that is stood next to is the smallest of the three. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, did, I didn't realise about the scale of them, I, I must admit. <laughs> the, the... Uh, and... On the modern pictures, you just can't see all three in a line because the one in the far distance uh, is in the trees and mm. you can't, it's impossible to see. So, uh, and I quite like that. It was obviously from a, a railway poster in the 30s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, this is the Thornborough Henges. Uh, the Thornborough Henges... Uh, they're not the biggest henges in, in Britain, um, but there's three of them very close together. Uh, and from the air, they're spectacular. And I'm sure when they were built, they were from the ground. <laughs> a lot of erosion has gone on since then. Um, and that's a picture of them from the air. It's actually a picture that you do often see that one. No, um, I seen that. So, and... Um, on the right, that's the northern one, so it's south on the uh, on the left. Can uh, I ask a, a question? Sorry, Marty. Just, yeah, just this is do. something I've always wondered. I I think I've probably asked you before on the Discord, <laughs> but the 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 connections between the three henges. Yeah, these the, these the lines, avenues. These lines down here. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah, what, yeah. They 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 were definitely avenues at the time. Mm. Uh, some description or that. Very difficult to see on the ground now. But, yeah. Uh, so, was something was there. Yeah. Something. Yeah. 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 And mm. also, if you if you visit it, there's a sort of ridge down here. Okay. Uh, and I think, if you, if you remember last time, I spoke about the being a Cersus there. Well, the mm. Cersus actually goes through here at this point. Right. But I was wondering if that was uh, maybe an offshoot from it or a second one or something oh, else yeah. but it looks the same construction so it's earth over sort of pounded stones uh, the the construction seems to be lots of small stones piled up with earth between and then covered over with earth mm. Mm. So, and is it is it chalk um no no, you uh, said last week, didn't you? Well, yeah, it's uh, sort of largely gripstone and uh, uh, limestone. Not not that far away, but yeah, yeah. Um, I've never not, looked not like enough to be able to tell. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's fair enough. Just to, yeah, the uh, dev devil's arrows are definitely gripstone. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. 
So um, just so you can picture where all this is. Uh, so we've got the Thombra hinges at the top left uh, and the Devil's Arrows down there at the bottom right in red uh, next to a town called Burrowbridge uh, and there's a, a village on from there called Alborough. I just want you to remember Alborough because uh, it appears later on. Yeah. Um, and I guess most people in England will have heard of Ripon, but people outside England won't have done. It's um, apparently, well, I'll come to it later on, but it's a very small city. Mm. Let's just say yeah. that. I um, uh, can't remember the population. It's about 15,000. So when I say small, I mean small. Um, and this line down here... Uh, is uh, currently the A1, mm -hmm. uh, and some of that, at least, was a Roman road, maybe pre-Roman. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the A1 is the... Oh, it's not the... It's not Ermine Great, Street, great, is it? great North Road, it was. It's not Ermine Street, is it? No, it was the Great North Road. Um... I don't think it's Ermine Street. Ermine, it might say Ermine, it's for me. But it's the, the north to south on the on the east. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think, oh, I don't know, I've got confused now. <laughs> Doesn't, it's not too hard at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Presum presumably you're drugged up with paracetamol. Oh yeah, yeah, I've had it all, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right, so... We talked about the stars so and how uh, we use a technique to map the stars to the ground. Uh, and I've given that a name, which is Stage Archaeology. Right. So stands for Stellarium and Google Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and... We went through the process of uh, how I identified that the monuments were reflected on the ground uh, by, sorry, the stars were reflected on the ground by the monuments. Uh, and this is the where, where they all lay uh, in terms of uh, their relationship to each other. The Devil's Arrows down here, uh, it's very difficult to see the stars because all of this is very close together, so I've actually expanded the the, the, the star view so they don't overlap by anywhere near what it mm. looks like there. So you can see that the accuracy, and we talked about this last time, yeah. is, um, I think, exceptional. Yeah. You might argue with that. So other things we covered. So we talked about the significance of the River Ewer, which... Um, I believe uh, is marks out the uh, the Milky Way in terms of the uh, stars uh, instead of, in terms of the star map. Uh, we talked about the Egyptian star map, which I think yeah, that's the best example of it and the most convincing example of it. Yeah, uh, you can disbelieve any of this you want. By the way, it's just some of it might be coincidence. <laughs> But I don't think that is. It doesn't look like it to me. No, no. Uh, we talked about possible connections between Egypt and Yorkshire. So if you remember the the river's name to start off with, but the monuments were covered in white. Uh, there were two or three other things. I can't remember mm -hmm. without looking. Um, and we talked about the standard model age of the site, which is about two, 2800 BC. Uh, and I don't think that is very far out. <clears throat> and we talked about the builders of these monuments and how they mysteriously vanish. No one knows why. Sometime in the third millennium. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So today I want to talk about why the location is as it is. So where it is on the map. Uh, and the specific layout on, in the map. And I've broken that down into four elements, actually. Uh, so there's the legend of it. Uh, there's, is it. Does it reflect movements of the moon? Uh, does it reflect the position of uh, Aldebaran? 
which is the brightest star in Taurus. Uh, and as we saw on that map, you may not remember, but on that map, uh, the hinge that's just north of the Devil's Arrows uh, is Alderbone. Mm -hmm. uh, we then go on to the Ripon Cathedral hypothesis, which is part of the location. Um, and I didn't believe it when I first found it, but mm. I think there's a lot of co corroborating evidence for it. Uh, then I want to talk about the location in terms of more global sense. Mm -hmm. um, is it a special location for any reason? Uh, so we finish that section about location. Then we go on to wider Yorkshire area. So a look at uh, a very brief look at, at the uh, the other monuments, and then I go on to Rudstone, which um, is quite interesting in itself. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Sounds great. Okay. So we start off with, why was it built in this location? Um, once again, I think that's the smaller one of the stones, and you can see the bigger one very vaguely in the trees. Mm. <clears throat> so, as we discussed, the complex reflects the stars, and those are the star specific stars. So we've got uh, Orion's belt down here, Pleiades up here and all the barn there. So, however you lay this out, you've got to have this V shape, mm -hmm. and it has to be a precise V. So that angle has to be maintained, and the relationship of that length to that length has got to be maintained. Are you seeing my, the movement of the mouse? By the way, yes, 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 yeah. yes. We can see that. All right. So, the layout, when you see it on the map, is rather odd. I mean, those angles don't look as though they mean anything. Um, and I don't think the Devil's Arrows were built in that particular location because they were close to a quarry, because the quarry is at Plumpton Rocks, which is over eight miles away. So, I mean, these are... Pretty heavy things, 30, 40, 50 tons. Mm. Uh, moving them, obviously possible because they've been done. But, you know, the countryside is not made for moving stuff like that. It's all mm. horrible mud and stuff like, you know. Mm. You certainly wouldn't do it in winter. That's for sure. no. <laughs> so why is this main axis in red in that position? and not north-south are aligned to the rising of the Pleiades, because we know that the Devil's Arrows are the Pleiades, so they could could align with the rise of them at a specific date in history. Um, now, that line is 142 degrees, 141 and a bit, actually. Um, if you measure it from uh, the central hinge at Thornborough, uh, and from there, the de uh, the Pleiades never never rise further south than 128 degrees. So it quite clearly, isn't that? So 141, 151. Down there, it says about the 128 degrees. Orion's belt actually does achieve those angles. But it's like 5,300 BC. Oh, okay. So I don't think they're that old. But with state of dating as it is, who knows? Yeah, well, absolutely. I think it's best just to, you know, get all the data and then you can go with yeah. your gut one way or another. But it's, yeah. it's interesting it's, to have that date, nevertheless. Yeah. Yeah. As I say, I've got a date that, uh, down to a specific year, which I think it was designed. Cool. Uh, but we won't get to that today. So many people, have, I mean, loads of people have investigated this, and I've been looking at it since I started this, and I started this in the first COVID lockdown, and I've been puzzling over it and wondering about it and all the rest of it. So possible solutions are that it's a lunar standstill marker, 
uh, or it's a solstice marker. Well, quite clearly it ain't a solstice marker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have a quick look at the well might not be quick actually but have a look at the moon the, the lunar movements so the movements of the moon so it's there are two elements well a lot of elements to it but there's two that you notice from the ground immediately or not immediately but over a period of time so as it says the uh the movements are, are complex. Over a month, its rising point moves from a furthest north position. Uh, and day by day, that the, the moon will rise further and further south uh, until it gets to a furthest south position. And it takes 14 days to do that. Um, it then begins to move back uh, and eventually gets back uh, to the, where it set off effectively, and the set points obviously reflect that on the other side. So you can imagine it's like this. So this is uh, this is a specific day, but I won't mention what it is at the moment because that's on the latest slide. <laughs> uh, so this is the moonrise on the first uh, of May in 2025. Um, and you can see it's just over the horizon there, um, and it's 55 degrees azimuth. All right, so 14 days later, this is where it's rising. Okay. So you can see that it's tracked all that way. Um, as it moves, obviously the set position moves inwards as well and this curve uh, drops so the height of the moon drops mm. right right now the complexity comes from there is then an 18.6 year cycle so we've seen that it starts um at a northern point uh and then each month it sort of travels across the horizon but that northern point uh, if it is the northernmost point of it uh, the next month it will be slightly further south so it's beginning to close in on the horizon if you imagine that mm -hmm. and I've got a picture which will show you so don't worry imagining if you can't imagine <laughs> so uh, so, the, as it says, the set point moves in um, and they move towards each other. Uh, and once again, the moon's altitude in the sky, maximum altitude, moves down. Can I, so, just so this is from, uh, purely for me, um, yeah. can, is this like scaling down what the sun does over the course of the year? From rising yes, in a... Yes, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So on the summer solstice, it's highest in the sky. Yeah. Uh, and in at the uh, winter solstice, it's lowest. And the rise and set points are the narrowest together. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So here, this is uh, five years later. So it was 2025 before, if you remember. Mm. So it's 2029, uh, also in May. And it's now, that's, uh, this line here is where it did rise. This is where it's rising now. Mm -hmm. So each each month it's moved slightly further uh, towards the south. And likewise, the set position has moved slightly further towards the north. I think I know why you've picked these years now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know. I think I know why you've. Go on then, it. tell me. <laughs> is it because we're just about to enter a maximum? Yes. Period. Yeah. The oh, yeah. lunar maximum is twenty twenty five. Okay. Oh, uh, right. Am I right that it is so sort of over the course of a few years? They don't necessarily say one year is the maximum. Well, or? the thing about the maximum, uh, it's called a lunar standstill. And yeah. the movement, the, it's very similar to the sun, actually. The movement is very slow as it changes. Hmm. Uh, so it appears that over a period, it's not moving very much. Okay. Um, 
and it moves faster and faster as it gets into the moon. Right. So, so, so just it, like at the solstice, yeah. there's a couple of days either side, which That's pretty right, much when the, it's same the same length. Yeah, okay, but at right, the yeah. equinox, it's sort of tracking across the horizon very quickly. Mm, yeah, okay. Right. Right. So, after 9.3 years, the moon gets to uh, the, the northernmost point, the northernmost rise point, has moved further and further south, and it gets to its furthest south position. Uh, and likewise, the, uh, the southernmost set point has moved further and further north, and it gets to its northernmost position. And at that point, the moon is at the lowest point in the sky that it can ever be. Okay. Um, once it gets to that position, it starts tracking north again. So, as we just said, these points where it changes are called standstills. So, the widest ones... Uh, are called major lunar standstills. That's the furthest north and the furthest south one. And the narrowest ones are called minor lunar standstills. So if you think about this, you've got a good way of um, tracking the year in some respects by the movement of the sun along the horizon. Um, but how do you count years after that? And the thought here is that the ancients used the movements of the moon to track uh, the years. So you've got here, it's 18.6 years. You can see in the 18.6 year cycle before the current one, that was when Fred had that battle and won. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a theory. I don't know whether that's true or not. Uh, so this is the minor lunar standstill, so we've got another five years forwards, and that's as far as it's got. So it's moved from from this line to this line, and likewise, the uh, the southernmost point has moved from that line to that line. Okay, and that's it uh, rising at the at the uh, this south point. So there's some other cycles. Uh, the nodal cycle, I think, is the most interesting. Uh, so the orbits as seen from the Earth of uh, of the Moon and the Sun uh, are not in the same plane, and there's twice a year that the cross uh, the planes of the orbits cross each other like that, uh, and they're they're called nodes, and they're quite significant actually because uh, that's the only time when you can have an eclipse. Don't have right. it every time, but it's the only time you can. And then there's a few others down there which you might be interested in, but you probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe another day. Yes. <laughs> so the thought was that this line down here reflected a, a, a lunar standstill, and I mentioned that in a couple of slides. Uh, but I just thought you needed to know. Well, people, I mean, you might know know what it was anyway. But other people. So you say. Um, so, so you say it, it, it's been thought. It's, it's other other theorists have come up with yes, this. Yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I don't know what that line is at the moment. So, <laughs> uh, I'm not picking up the very top of the screen, by the way, because I'm getting this uh, this menu. Uh, but the simplest thought of how the uh, that map occurs laid on the uh, on the on on the uh, ground is to copy the sky to the ground. Now, as far as I know, no one's ever thought of this before, because no one in the past has known that uh, the Devil's Arrows of the Pleiades or uh, Canaban Henge is Aldebaran. So why would the one lay it on the ground? So. That's what I've just said. So, this is the standard model uh, date of the build. 
Uh, and this is when the Pleiades reaches its culminating point in the sky, which is the highest point it reaches. Um, and that's always due south, by the way. Uh, but you can see that the angle is 144 and nearly half degrees. So it's not quite right. It's not far out. So mm. it's possible that they did reflect it uh, and they didn't quite get it right. Hmm. Um, I'm not convinced, but um, that angle, by the way, does change over years because of precession. So the uh, uh, Orion's belt will move; it's further out from the uh, from the pole, so it'll move at a faster rate than uh, than the Pleiades. So the angle will change. Okay. Um. So, as I said, we have an approximation to the angle, and I have no idea how they would have measured this. I had enough trouble measuring this. <laughs> We're using a computer. Right <laughs> yes. so yeah. how, how different is that angle? That's a 144, was it? One so, four we're, looking, we're looking for 141 degrees, so it's three and a half degrees. Isn't it? Which isn't bad. Now, remember this, no. because, I, because I think that, other, that they designed it for other reasons. But they knew that it was almost right. This, <laughs> so, I, so I can not remember. The prime, I was not what, the primary thing they were aiming for. Yeah, but it was, was close enough. So that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So I was watching one of uh, the vids you did earlier in the in the week when you were talking about the synchronicity of various things mm -hmm. coming together, and uh, uh, and I think we're seeing quite a lot of that in mm, today's right. session. So, I mean, it might be good enough, it might not be. So. There is a legend of why it's built there. So um, I mentioned Alborough before, and I said remember the name. So it's mm -hmm. actually the other side of Borough Bridge and the Devil's Arrows. Um, now, the legend is that the devil threw stones from the top of Howe Hill, and he was throwing them at Borough Bridge. So mm -hmm. there's a little uh, little couplet down there. Borough Bridge, keep out to we. For Alborough Town, I will ding down. <laughs> Hmm. Well, ding down. Like uh, I'm sure that somebody who knows who's got a proper Yorkshire accent can say that. Oh, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just that's not there because it's an interesting legend. That's there because there might be something in it. Okay. So is it a legend or a distant, distant memory? Well, the line from How Hill to Old Al Albra uh, passes directly through the middle of the Devil's Arrows. Now, that line is 43,200 feet long. Might not mean anything to you. 86,400 seconds in a day. It's a processional number, so it's 72 by 600. Multiply the height of the Great Pyramid by 43,200 and you get the polar radius of the Earth. That's where I know it from. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fantastic. So, is it coincidence? Did they use feet, even? Mm. Mm. Well, you know, my opinion is that I think that all of our all of the systems of measurement that we use on a daily basis, the ones that are well established, have been around for thousands of years. Well, and they're I all think interconnected. I, yes, I think I think that as well. And um I wouldn't have done a few years ago, but I certainly do now. Mm. But yeah. let's let's just continue with this thought. So if I take a line from the northern hinge, um At Thornborough, it gives me an almost exact right angle to the line to Alborough. So that's the line to Alborough. Yeah. That's the line to the Northern Henge. It's 42,533 oh, feet. Isn't it? 550 yeah. Um. Now, if I take that line and let it overshoot Howe Hill, 
Um, and make it 43,200 long. And then draw a right angle to that. It takes me directly to Oldborough. So I finish up with a right angle that looks like that. Yeah. So is there any significance in that? I don't know. I mean, the original line, I should have shown the original line on here, actually, but it's like, like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's... um. Is sorry, how hills are your bottom left marker and you've got almost equal lengths? Yes. Yeah, on your um Yeah, they are equal lengths, those two lengths. Great, fantastic. Cool. Yeah, just I mean, I'm sure you'll remember that, but do yeah. any. So Right, so let's just look at the lunar alignment theory. Um so we consider an object is risen when it breaks the horizon. But the ancients, uh, and I think this is more sensible, actually, uh, considered it risen when it was above the horizon, visibly above the horizon. Uh, and uh, that normally means about a degree above because with all the haze and everything, you can't see it. So with the moon, then, we're talking about probably about 1.5 degrees above the horizon. So if I have a line from Thornborough to the Devil's Arrows, uh, it's 140, actually, yeah, it's 141 degrees, which makes this even worse. But you can see here the moon rising, uh, and it's actually at, at um, 149.32. So mm. it's not. Uh, a lunar alignment from the Devil's Arrows. Okay. So it doesn't reflect it. Right. <clears throat> but if I take the reverse of that and look at the line from the Devil's Arrows to Thornborough, it's 321.3 degrees. So if I look at the high point, if I draw a line or look at the altitude of the line from the Devil's Arrows, uh, there's a high point on it, and that is about half a degree in altitude from the Devil's Arrows. So the moon would be at, um, needs to be at uh, about 1.14 degrees. Uh, and you can see here it's the altitude... This is at 330, uh, 321.3, uh, and it's at the right altitude. So it could be right, this. So looking down from the Devil's Arrows, uh, on a major lunar stand still, uh, I would probably see the moon setting over the hill that is in the near ground. Right. In the direction um, of the Henges? Yes. Yeah, OK. But, but... This, these are my views on it. Uh, why do you align it with a set point and not the rise point? Wouldn't the rise point be more important? Mm. Right? Uh, the Devil's Arrows don't appear to have any astronomical ma uh, markers. And I mentioned this in a later, later on, but uh, they don't appear to. So why have one for the moon? Mm. And... The most important one, I think, is that the way the hinges are laid out is that they mark um, both the set and rise points at the major lunar standstill. Uh, so if you've already got it marked in the hinges, why have it uh, in that line? So I don't think that line represents it. Now, this one actually is a bit more interesting than the moon. <laughs> so we know that Canaban Henge represents Old Barn, uh, and that uh, alignment down to uh, the Devil's Arrows is 151 degrees. Uh, Old Barn's furthest rise is at 151 degrees. So I'll just have a look at this. This is the rise angle of all the barn over time. So this is caused by... Um, uh, procession? Procession, yes. So you imagine that um, 
the whole sky is moving around. It's not just those stars at the north. Mm. The whole sky moves around. Yeah. So the uh, uh, the rise point of any given star moves in some sort of pattern like this. You can also see in here that we're not just picking up precession because the uh, the maximum is better. Yeah. We're also picking up the uh, uh, the uh, the ellipse changes. So uh, the we're moving along a, a, an elliptical path. The mm. uh, start again. The sun is moving along an elliptical path, effectively. And um, no, got it wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about this. That's all right, no uh, problem. The Earth's orbit round the sun mm -hmm. uh, is an ellipse. That ellipse contracts and expands. Right, okay. And, and that is what we're seeing here. Right. So a mixed blend of the two things then. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. So if you draw a line up from 9,600, uh, you get to the maximum point up there. Mm-hmm. And that shows you it actually happening. So we're one degree above, and it's 151 degrees. Mm -hmm. And the date is 9,800. And that is a standstill point. So it's from about 9,600 to about 9,800 BC. Okay. Right. Is there any significance in those dates? Well, that's the termination of the uh, last ice age, really. The end of the Younger Dryas. Uh, and that was a catastrophic um, climate change at that point. Uh, and it's also a Plato's day <coughs> for the end of Atlantis. Mm. So could that be built into this design? Seems, well, I don't know. <laughs> Plato mm. knew about the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Plato came after these people. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I keep interrupting. Can I just can we just pop back a couple of slides, or just maybe the last slide, if possible? So, my other thinking about this um, with the the lunar sandsill and uh, and Thornborough. So you were saying that you reckon just from if you are in Thornborough, just from the Thornborough hinges alone, you can mark these. Yeah, I've, I've got this on a later slide. Actually. Yes, yeah. I, I just wanted to make the standing you've got the... You can stand in the centre of the centre hinge mm. and look through the sudden entrance. Uh, that will enable you to look through the entire southern hinge because the entrances all line up. Yeah. And that points directly to the uh, major lunar standstill. Uh, rise. Yeah. And so likewise, the... if you, at the end of that day, if you turn round and look the other way, you will see the set. Great. Great. I just wanted to understand that properly. And I think um, what you were saying about looking from Thornborough to the, to the Devil's Arrows or the Devil's Arrows back, Thornborough itself seems much more a sky viewing place than the devil's arrows do, if that makes sense. Like... I've got I've got later on uh, a reasonably long section on um, it's not today actually uh, on alignment mm. uh, and a couple of things stand out, and that is that neither of the locations with stones, so that's the devil's arrows and rudstone, have any. Uh, local alignments that I can see, and by that I mean a line that reflects some sort of uh, happening in the sky, a solstice, mm. a major lunar um, standstill, and you can pick out places on the horizon that would clearly sh show where that point was. Whereas Thombra has loads of them. Loads of them, yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, the, the obvious exception to loads of them, actually, <coughs> at Thombra, uh, is that it doesn't have um, an equinox marker. 
Okay. A solstice marker, but it doesn't have an equinox marker. Now, I think that's maybe because there's some significance, uh, and we haven't seen it yet, but there's some mm. significance uh, with the equinox uh, at um, the Devil's Arrows. Cool. Sorry, sorry to take you back there. No, no, no. You just uh, wanted to make sure I got it in my head right. So where have we got to? Yeah. yeah. So, so if we don't want to cover a procession, <laughs> <laughs> I'll skip over that. I'm going to hope that a lot of our viewers understand procession. If not, um, <laughs> just remember it's pre-session if you're having a Google, not pro-session. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What do you reckon, Adam? Um, I reckon go for it. Yeah, let's go for it. I yeah. reckon go for it. I think it's an interesting topic anyway, so. Absolutely, yeah. This first slide I think everyone knows about. So, you know that the Earth rotates about its axis, but the axis also rotates <laughs> itself. And that uh, rotation period is pretty long. So, it says here 25,800 years. Uh, that's our best estimate, uh, and it's been estimated differently by different people over time. Uh, there's some thought, actually, that it's changing, that the mm. length of period is changing. Uh, and I think I mentioned later on that, uh, yes, I do, so I won't mention it now. <laughs> so that axis is rotating. It takes about a, a human lifetime um, for the that rotation to move one degree and you will see it moving at the moment well you won't see it moving because you don't live long enough to, if you live long enough <laughs> uh, you would see it moving because at the moment our pole star is polaris well in um i don't know 500 years or so it will noticeably not be polaris mm. so the um place at the pole will, will be vacant <coughs> most of the time there's no pole star mm. interestingly at the time these were built there was a pole star so uh, yeah if there's any significance in that i have no idea whatsoever uh on top of that, there's uh, there is a rock, as you know, um, on the axis that goes from twenty two and a half degrees to twenty four and a half. That takes forty thousand years, and that change on the, um, uh, the the shape of the ellipse of the orbit takes a hundred thousand years, oh, and it's thought, it's thought to be uh, the reason behind the hundred thousand year cycle of ice ages. So, but no one really knows. So this is the the path of the axis over the years. So we are we are up here. Okay. No, sorry, we're up here. That's yeah. zero. <laughs> we're at two thousand, obviously. Um, when these monuments were built, it was about three thousand BC, and Thurban was the uh, the pole star. And you can see that there are. Big gaps around here, mm. but uh, there are notable places where where there are pole stars. Yeah, yeah, I think everyone knows that. The effect of the rotation is what I was saying before. It's not just the star, the uh, the axis that moves. It's the whole of the sky is moving round. Uh, so the stars closest to uh, the pole, and uh, they'll, they'll be seen to rotate around the pole. So the cold second pole, uh, literally going around the pole. Hmm. Stars lower in the sky, though, uh, they'll have their rise position, as we showed before, moving along the horizon uh, and from one side of the uh, uh, the rotation to the other side and then once it gets past that point it'll come back round again uh <clears throat> some stars because of the this and the tilt uh 
will be low enough in the sky so they'll never rise. And Sirius goes through that. Okay, right. So, as the sky turns, so do the constellations. So, at the moment, we're in uh, Pisces, about to, well known, we're about to go into Aquarius. Somebody's even written a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> And it says there that the period is 25,920 years. So, that, yeah, and a, another different number, but yeah. round about, right? Um, the movement across the sky in a year is uh, less than... Uh, it's less... The Earth moves less than uh, the sky in a full year. Which right, okay. Is why this occurs. Mm. Right. Right. I should have polished up on this bit before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, so every every year you're further into the next star sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we're about to trip over into Pisces. Uh, it's the vernal equinox, the spring equinox, when it's uh, when people consider that it's uh, the the star sign is the rising sign, and it's uh, typically thought to be twenty one thousand five hundred years for mm. each star sign, but they do vary because the sizes vary. <clears throat> And so, this is why um, somebody wrote a song in the 60s. Yes, that's that right. You will still get people today saying that we still haven't entered the age of the Yeah, we haven't. Yeah, we haven't. yeah so <laughs> we haven't. it's a very slow process. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, as I say, it's uh, one degree every, every 72 years. So <laughs> since the 60s, it's changed a degree. <laughs> a degree. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah one degree. Yeah. Well, I, thought we, I thought we thought we entered in 2021. But, it, but I had so many people come at me with different ideas about when that Yeah, every, everyone's got a different view of this. Yeah. 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 Um, all those constellations are on the ecliptic, which is the path of the sun. And if you remember, we talked about the Golden Gateway of the ecliptic last time, mm. which is between um, the High Hades and the, uh, the Pleiades, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Um, the megalithic monuments were all built in the age of Taurus, which is interesting because we're talking about the Pleiades are in Taurus. Yeah, right. <clears throat> this is the effect it has on the rise and set of the stars. Sorry, not the set, the, the rise of the stars. But you can see that I've marked uh, the Pleiades in green, <clears throat> Aldebaran in red, and Sirius in uh, in blue, and you can see that these points appear are where Sirius never rises, and this okay. is this is from the Devil's Arrows. This also occurs from Giza. Um, I'm not sure. I seem to remember that the uh, it's about eight thousand BC when uh, Sirius becomes visible again from Giza. I think from memory. Okay. Um, <clears throat> a yuga cycle lasts, so this is back to that number that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, a long time, four million years. Adam to the Flood was 8,000 to 6,400 weeks. No, was 600 years when the Flood came, and 600 uh, times 72 is 43,200. <laughs> 72 is the number of hidden names of God in Judaism. Hmm. Uh, Babylonia was ruled by 10 kings for 432,000 years before the flood. Uh, yeah. On the day of Ragnarok, oh, this, this, this sounds awful, 800 warriors will come out of 540 doors to fight alongside Odin. 800 times 540 is 43,200. And I just picked all those up from on Google. I mean, there's yeah, loads, loads on more. the internet if you want to look. So I think when you, so me and Adam <laughs> obviously talk about historical Arthur over other ideas, but when you look at uh, like celestial Arthur ideas, 
the idea of a once and future king, I think, is to do with the the rising of uh, Ursa Major in the sky, being you know being the bear, the arc. Yeah, yeah. And I think so. I think that's a processional. There's a processional idea brought in there. Um, yeah, which it was yeah, it surprised me at all. So. Arthur, Arthur, I think translates as the Bear King or something like that. That's well. right. Yeah. yeah. One wonders whether it's about a constellation that is not visible at times. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, or, yes. Or... Yeah. 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 Interesting point. That is. Right. So. Other factors then. So we've seen the arrangement is not solstice related. Um, and I just skimmed over that. But this line is 142 degrees uh, from Thornborough. The solstice uh, from memory is 149 degrees. Um, so it's not going to pick it out in any way. <clears throat> uh, is that right, though? If I split the Devil's Arrows to Thumbra line in half, I get this. So I've got a red half and a blue mm. half. Okay. All right. If I then take a right angle to that line, um, that particular second red line uh, points to the summer solstice sunrise. Huh. Okay. Now, I'd been working on this for three and a half years before I found this. Wow. <laughs> so it's not very surprising. No one has ever spotted it. Yeah. <laughs> well done. So that's it drawn out. Now, I thought that was bloody interesting. Yeah. But I couldn't make out what it signified whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So why would a right angle to that line? Point to the summer solstice. Now there must be something else behind it, and there is. So, can we take a quick break there? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Absolutely. Just, uh, pause. Strange how we're recording. Yeah. Uh, one of the strange things about my experience on this is that, um, as I say, I've been doing this for coming up to four years, uh, on and off, and a lot of off actually, and there's various reasons for that. You get to the stage where you're fed up of the damn thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. That's just... And and it's not just a normal fit. It seems more, you know, you think, well, this can't be right. It must be a load of, right. a load of rubbish. <laughs> well, I understand, yeah. <laughs> but over time, you can't put it down. You've got to come back to it, have another look. <laughs> Uh, so it takes, and you do have to kiss an awful lot of frogs to find a, a prince. I mean, it's... Uh... So I've looked at all sorts of things, uh, and obviously what you're seeing is only the ones that are relevant. And there is some relevance in um, uh, the moon rising, and there is some relevance uh, in the great year. So, but this takes us to the Ripon Cathedral hypothesis, as I call it. Mm. Uh, so that's Ripon Cathedral. Pretty impressive building, if you look at mm. it. <clears throat> so a, a cathedra is, literally means seat. So it's the seat of a bishop, is a cathedral. Uh, in England, there are 26 medieval cathedrals. Uh, Ripon was founded in the 660s. Uh, it's got an Anglo-Saxon crypt, which is the oldest structure of any cathedral in Britain. <clears throat> Current building was started in 1160. It was a minster until 1836. In, up until 1836, the uh, York had the bishop and he moved up to uh, Ripon. Maybe it's a nicer place, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's the oldest city in England is Ripon and one of the smallest as I said before and that I mean if you've ever been in an English cathedral it looks just like that it's absolutely massive and yeah. 
so impressive. You know, and uh, you two will have been in cathedrals, but there'll be people who see this who just don't know what they are. Can I just uh, also add quickly, um, I seem to remember when you first looked at this, Marty, I had a quick delve. Um, was it not, am I right in saying a Saxon lord got in a local Brythonic priest? They, oh, there was something like there was a joint Saxon and Brythonic founding of the original church. And mm -hmm. then within a very short succession... They were then rebuilding a Saxon church on the spot, or something. Yes, like I think that. I th there was something like that. I think. Yeah, uh, but I, I think I it was... didn't make an note of it. But if you can dig it out, that'd be good. No, I think I think it was just available on the Wikipedia, so I should right. be. Able to... right. But uh, just a just an interesting note for people. Yeah. Who are that All sort right. of thing on our page. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Another picture from the inside. So you can see stained glass windows that they're very proud of, by the way. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, wow. Oh wow! Yeah. So pretty impressive, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is the seventh century crypt in the bottom there. Um, so I think that's underneath the building now. So you go down some stairs. Uh, they've got pieces of something called see the Seagrid Stone, and um, it commemorates an ancient uh, dragon slayer, and there's a, apparently, I didn't know, but there's quite a famous legend about Siegfried, and he did all sorts of things. The first thing he ever did was kill this dragon. Mm. Uh, and there was, <clears throat> and the dragon had a pile of gold, uh, and there were him and, um, I think it was uh, uh, the, his sword maker who were interested in uh, killing the dragon. So the sword maker made the sword and Siegfried went and killed it. Um, and then the uh, sword maker was going to kill Siegfried to get the, uh, the gold, but Siegfried built him, beat him to it. <laughs> All right. Uh, and <clears throat> if you know classical music, uh, Siegfried is uh, in Wagner. Deine Belangen. There you go. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, Lewis Carroll's father was a canon there, Ooh. and this is uh, a misery code, if that's how you pronounce it. Uh, so it's a gryphon clutching a rabbit as it tries to escape down a hole, uh, and yeah. <clears throat> and apparently that was the inspiration for Alice. Hmm. Uh, now these things are on. So they have these like pop up seats, and they're on the underneath of the pop up seats. So when the when it's put away, you can see uh, these these um, wonderful bits of art, really. Aren't they? That's such a nice yeah. attention to detail. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. and there's so there's a lot of seats, thirty of them, I think, and each one has something different underneath it. Nice. Right, so let's get back to what we're really talking about. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> now, interestingly, the building is not east-west. It's about three degrees out, as you can see here. I've drawn a line along the roof, uh, and it's 87 and a bit degrees. Um, if you're ever arguing with people who are talking about pole locations and uh, how old the buildings are uh, aligned to the poles, well, they're not. Just have a look at cathedrals. Hardly mm. any of them are aligned northwest, east, no, mm. east, west, <laughs> north, south. <clears throat> right. So if I extend my solstice line back in the opposite direction, so the green line was my solstice line mm -hmm. coming from the split line that goes from Thornborough uh, to the Devil's Arrows, I get that red line. And it runs through the grounds of Ripon Cathedral. Oh well, hundred yeah. feet from hundred feet from yeah. the centre. Now, yeah. if I correct the line slightly, and it probably still hit it, even if I don't correct it, actually, uh, and uh, run it back the other way, 
it hits uh, a mound, an ancient mound called Pudding Pie Hill. So Pudding Pie Hill is an earth mound. Uh, it's been identified as a round barrow, that's it, and you can see it on this uh, LIDAR mm -hmm. down here. So it dates classically between 2400 and 1500 BC, so it's roughly in the right area, and uh, they might be totally wrong about that date. <clears throat> When they're excavating it in the 19th century, they found what was said to be a giant, a large warrior, but that was dated to the 6th century AD, so it wasn't one of the classically old Yorkshire giants. Mm. Um, Yorkshire's had a number of giants in uh, in legend, by the way. So yeah. All if, right. you're, if you're interested in uh, Yorkshire legends, um, Shannon did an episode for the Snake Brothers. Uh, it's episode 209. So yes, really good. And really anyone good. interested, have a listen to that. Yeah, really good. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> Can I just say this sort of mound is exactly the sort of thing um, that Ross and Steve Willits were looking for for the for the Southeast Wales uh, star maps because it's yeah yeah seems to be regionally it seems to be different how you mark your star maps essentially and that sort of thing was bang on what most of the southeast wales ones were re represented mm -hmm. by um and just like your star map if they're out they're only out by point of a degree you know yeah, yeah. i mean they're, they're, they're not basically no, no yeah. i certainly couldn't make accuracy like no, no, no. i don't <laughs> suppose you could find an older <laughs> name for pudding pie hill could you <laughs> Um, no, I couldn't actually. Uh, but mm. the legends say it was raised by the fairies, so that probably means it's pretty old. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the fa the fairies were positively so good as to furnish pies and puddings to their juvenile votaries, <laughs> which is why it's called pudding yeah. pie. Oh, okay. <laughs> If any person runs round it five, uh, sorry, nine times, and then listens, you can hear the fairies conversing. It's, uh... Nice. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I've not spent a lot of time uh, <clears throat> looking at Pudding Pie Hill. Uh, in fact, I think it was only yesterday when I thought mm, maybe a picture of it might be nice, and then mm. I discovered a bit more about it. No, I'm glad you did. That was great. Yeah. So... If I look from the cathedral, the summer solstice sunset, that sunrise, uh, rises at exactly the high point on this line from Thornborough to the Devil's Arrows. It's dead on the high point, as seen from uh, Ripon, Ripon Cathedral. And the sun would stand just about one degree above the uh, hilltop. Oh, but, right. If I look from Pudding Pie Hill, <clears throat> that, it's the same high point again, obviously. But that picks out the uh, minor lunar sand still. And at that point, the moon would be about one and a half degrees above the high point. So that particular line represents two astronomical markers. Hmm. Now, also, the... Um, site of the cathedral is exactly 3,000 metres from the main line. Okay. So that's your left hand of your red lines there. That's the left hand of the red, yeah. Right. So Spot. we've got a few things going on there, but there's a few more. So I don't know whether you believe this or not yet, but let's look at more of these. <clears throat> If I extend that line uh, down to the southwest, that's the line that runs from the centre line down to um, uh, Ripon Cathedral, it hits a stone on the moors mm. called Harwith Moor Standing Stone. Now, that stone is similar to the Devil's Arrows in the way it looks, but it's smaller. So oh, yeah. here, that's the Southern Devil's Arrows, which you've seen already. Mm. And looks much smaller there, by the way, than the one we saw. Uh, that's how with more standing stone. So you can see the grooves mm. in it. Mm. 
shape is slightly different, obviously, but it's rumoured, oh, there is a tale that that southern stone has had the top broken off anyway. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. This is where it is in this bottom left-hand picture. See, it's an interesting shape. Mm. It immediately put me in uh, um, mind of a cursus uh, or cursus or how you mm. pronounce it. And that's where the line finishes and there's the stone. Right. It's definitely um, interesting where, where certain fields, where they've chosen <laughs> the um, location for field boundaries, when you get these weird, odd-shaped bits of land. Yeah, that's right. It's, it means something's there. It might not necessarily be ancient, but something is there, which is why they've chose to enclose the fields as they are. So Yeah, so <laughs> the owners of the field at one time, I don't know whether it's the most recent ones. When when the fields were tilled, we found that all of them were easy to turn over, except the one with the stone in it. There's virtually no soil depth, uh, no soil of any depth to write over. Oh, right. So there's something going on there. Don't know what it is. Pudding Pie Hill is 41,754 feet from the main axis. <clears> the <throat> diameter of the Earth at 54 degrees is 41,760,000 uh, feet. So Pudding Pie Hill is 1,000 of the Earth's diameter from the axis line. <laughs> that, that, that works in mm -hmm. any unit of measure. Freaking out. Well. So I think somebody meant that. <laughs> yeah. Right, so if I now draw a line from Howarth Moor, Howarth Moor, to the Devil's Arrows and to Thornborough Central, I get those two blue lines. Uh, their lengths are 59,900 feet, roughly, roughly, roughly. Um, so they're reasonably accurate, although with that layout, you would expect them to be similar in length. Um, but remember the 59,900. If I repeat that from Pudding Pie Hill, I get 49,850,000. Now, to me, that looks once again as though there's something going on there. We've got a 50,000 and a 60,000. Mm. <clears throat> so, could it be that they were laid out? to be 50,000 and 60,000 of long. Now, I've done the ones to the Devil's Arrows to where I think the centre is, which is the centre stone, actually. Well, we know that stones are missing, so we don't know where the centre is, really. So it could vary a little bit. <clears throat> so... We've seen that line is 95,025 feet long. The distance from Pudding Pie Hill uh, to the cathedral is 51,618. If I divide 95,000 by 51,000, I get 18.5. A lunar cycle is 18.6 years. Yeah. Could all be coincidence, but who knows? Hmm. Um, I don't hold out much hope for this one, but you never know. So, if I take the half line of Howarth, Howarth Moor to Pudding Pie Hill, I get that point which says midpoint in a, in a little yeah, okay. old sharrow. <clears throat> uh -huh. Now, if I look around there, Sharrow Cross is 500 feet from the midpoint. That Sharrow Cross is it is now supposedly a 13th century cross and um don't know whether you know about the theory of sanctuary or not but if you got within a certain uh, area of uh, the cathedral, cathedral yeah. you could claim uh, sanctuary um and they had markers around it so you knew when you were within there and it was <coughs> oh. Excuse me for keeping coughing. But, That's right. No. And it was a sanctuary marker. Right. Um, is it older? Does it mark the half point of the line? Hmm. 
Can I? Sorry, can we go back a second? It's one thing I'd um, I'd have a look at the lidar at that. So where your t- your blue and your red yeah, line, that circular thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That looks I've, interesting. I've very compelling. At, I've yeah. looked at the lidar for that. Do you remember mm. me telling you about the three flock voices? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, before I discovered all this ripping stuff, I had this nagging for week after week, actually, because I ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> never ignore him I um, never ignore him saying look look to the east of um, where you are effectively All right. Uh, and the impression I was getting was that it was somewhere to the east and slightly to the south of Thornborough <laughs> and I looked and looked and I couldn't really find anything I did find Pudding Pie Hill, and there's an earth maze a bit further south as well. But I couldn't time in. There was no way that I could do that at all. Um, and eventually it dropped out as this. But I also got a nag saying, look at this area down uh, where this midpoint is. So I don't know whether there is something there. I have looked at like well, that. that you know, I, I was looking at that, and it looks like a, like a hill fort enclosure. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Because even in the, in the cloud, sure. yeah, you can Around still there, see yeah. the continuation of it. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. And even just just the circle <laughs> in the fields in the, mid, yeah. in the middle of the two fields, is circle of trees is, a, is an odd thing. You know, yeah. Is. Yeah. So yeah. there might be something going on there, but I don't know. And I keep going back to it because I've got this nag. Uh, yeah. But, you know, the definition that we've got on the LIDAR at the moment, don't really tell you much. No, no, unfortunately. Yeah. I did get something interesting. Where was it? A bit further up in Shara. Somewhere around here, there's um, uh, a little wood with an octagonal building in it. Oh. You can't see from the map. But, no, no. Yeah. Uh, but it was in some, some big house's garden, so it might just be a summer house or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could be, Yeah. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Right. Remember How Hill? We talked mm. about How Hill. So, if you remember, we drew this line that was 43,200 feet long from the Northern Henge and it aimed towards How Hill but overshoots the top a little. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was the line that went to Albra, right angles to it. Also, 43,200. Now, if I draw that red line uh, from Ripon to Howe Hill, it has an angle of 224 degrees, right? The winter solstice sunset is at 25.5 degrees. Uh, So that's the blue line there. Um, And if we work on that uh, sunset, on the solstice, uh, we see that the sun sets right in this uh, uh, the right angle of this triangle that mm. the blue line goes to. So that would be the sun setting. The vertical scale is exaggerated, but you can see okay. it's set. So that where the sun sets there is right on that. Uh, that line and that is in, right in that right angle. Hmm. Now the gen- general topography of the area is fairly low lying, isn't it? Is that right? Um, no, it comes up onto the moors. This, oh right, you are getting a bit and there is a valley way. down. So there's a valley down here, and yeah. then you begin to come up into the hills here. Right. Okay. Um. It drops down over here, so this is the uh, the plain of Mowbray, I think it's called, and then eventually you get up to the Yorkshire Moors on this side. Yeah, okay, and right. The, the Pennines on this side, so you're effectively on the edge of the uh, the Pennines there. Great, thank you. So, still not sure. Remember that uh, Ripon Cathedral was three degrees off east west, mm. so. At 54 degrees, you are almost at a right angle. 
between the solstice rises and sets. So we have this. So if I take, that's the tower of Ripon yeah. Cathedral. If I draw a line down the tower there, I get the winter, winter solstice sunrise. If I draw a line up there, I get the summer solstice sunrise. And likewise, the sets the other way. Now, why would a Christian church do that? So, so are you saying that its east-west alignment is off in order to make its solstice alignment more yes. accurate? Yes, that's exactly that's what I'm saying. That's very cool. Nice. Nice. Looking puzzled, Adam. No, I, I like what you said about um, why would uh, why would a Christian church do that? It must be deliberate. Can't be anything. Else. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so that angle in ninety, it's actually eighty-eight. You've got to go all the way up to Edinburgh to get it to ninety, but it's near enough that you wouldn't notice it if you were stood on that the top of that tower. You just mm. wouldn't notice it. You'd see the sun coming up along that green line. Hmm. And. Hmm. Is there any evidence that Ripon was ever a significant place before before this? So I pulled this from, from the internet, obviously, but it's from a book that was written in 1851. So we've far more direct and conclusive evidence that the immediate vicinity of Ripon was regarded with particular interest and veneration. So this goes back as far as the Celts. Mm. So what I'm saying is it was something of that nature going back to at least 3000 BC. Mm. And that's why I wanted to talk to your Ripple guy. Yes, um, yeah. 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 I'd love to know where where if it, if he's watching person's... this, if he can get in touch, I'd much appreciate it. Yeah, cool. We'll see if we can help with that as well. <clears throat> yeah. So we've got various solutions as to the layout of this line. So I remember we were looking at that line from uh, the Devil's Arrows to Thornborough. So a major northern moon set marker. Uh, is it just drawn out from the sky? Mm. A line to the southern standstill of Alderbaran? Oh, Ripon Cathedral. So I don't know which you prefer among those. All, all of the above. <laughs> you can have a mixture. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems to me that that solstice sunrise line will probably predate the building of the hinges and the stones. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and that seems to be confirmed by the legend of How Hill, actually. So. How Hill was there, had some relationship to the Ripon uh, site. <coughs> uh, and it also had significance um, because of the solstice marker. Yeah. Um, do you think do you think How Hill could be the the place where the where the map was laid out from? Like a it's like we're going to start here and then we're going to... Oh, I suppose you had the placement of the river as well, which is not something you can really change. No, no. It's just the way how Hill just seems... And also because of the legend of throwing from how Hill. Yeah, that's right. There's, there's something like almost as if this is where you... Yeah. like a... Maybe, maybe it's... Um, if you go back to Druids and pre-Druids and all that sort of thing, maybe it was the seat of their learning or something like that, mm -hmm. so where they would meet to discuss whatever they discussed, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it does seem to have some fair significance, I think. Yeah. So I think the cathedral was built on a very ancient site. Uh, the earliest known church, by the way, was was uh, on the site was built before the uh, earliest. Sorry, the the earliest church was built on a existing um, religious building of some type, which is probably what you're referring to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
That's yeah. cool. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we also know that many religious sites were re reused, and we will come on to talk about Rudstone shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a church right next to the stone, and that's known to be built on uh, an ancient religious site. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So when the stars gave a cross over the solstice line, which wouldn't happen every day, you know, slow, as I said, the stars are slowly moving at some point. They cross that line. Mm. Uh, maybe the symbolism was too great to avoid building the thing. So we've got well, we've got a copy of the sky. We've got the solstice line. Uh, we've got the site of the cathedral, and they all seem to fit together. Mm. So I think it's likely that the ancients didn't know about the, uh, well, they must have known the solstice line. Uh, the major loon lands, uh, stands still, and maybe they knew about Aldebaran. I mean, <clears throat> it's quite a long take, but as I said, Plato knew about it. So, mm. so again, we're looking at a very ancient site. So nice. that's the Ripon hypothesis. Huh. Mm. No, it's fantastic. Brilliant. I think I think it's pretty good actually. But I yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm going to stretch stretch your uh, push your ear a bit. <laughs> so I know that um, Orion is really one of these sort of outer uh, constellations. If you think about the inner ring, which has got like uh, Polaris on it, for instance, yeah. and Ursa Major. And then Orion is on a further out outer section, which dips yeah. in and out of the horizon. Do you think that Ripon or some of the or Hal Hill moving that way can show some other points on a star map? Possibly. I mean, I mean, I don't understand which way we should look from your lines to look for further stars because my brain hasn't quite quite got that. But um, yeah. I was I was going to start looking at that and, mm. um, uh, about two weeks ago, but I've been involved in other stuff, and you know. Oh, we yeah. Can, so oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It was um, just it only came to mind because I saw about Hugh he Hugh Evans when he he first found his original star map. He thought, well, yeah. I'm not going to find any of the southern constellations because of the age of it. And yeah. then when I started looking for it. Surprise, surprise, they will start cropping up around the edges exactly where you start to think they may be. And I just I just thought that, you know, you have like a little slice of a map here. Yeah. There could be so much more, like not even getting yes. into the southern yeah. constellations, just sticking yeah. with northern ones. <laughs> you know, there could be so much more in the area. Yeah. Um but on, I mean, it depends how much still it's, remains as the other. I mean, as I say, you've got to kiss a lot of frogs. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Work. It, it is hard work looking. Well, yeah, no. Yeah, um, yeah, me, yeah, me and Adam were talking um, earlier about how it, it's better to entertain the ideas, at yes. least, yeah. in order yeah. to test them and before without just, um, <clears throat> you know, saying it's not possible straight yeah. off and then you're never going to find it, are you? So, no, that's true. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. I've 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 still got a little nag about somewhere in South Yorkshire. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that, is that it? Is that what you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> well, to well it's, it's a nag, so I've not found anything yet. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Right. So, is there any significance in this particular location? So, uh, fifty-four degrees north. Uh, and that shows you it from the North Pole. I have shown it from the North Pole for a reason. So in terms of distances, the distance from the North Pole to the Devil's Arrows is 10% of the Earth's circumference. Hmm. Um, almost exactly. Mm. Wow. We've already seen yeah. this one today. Yeah. High Hill being one ten thousandth. So I think the new the diameter of the Earth Actually, yeah. that's wrong, isn't it? It's one ten thousandth of the Earth's circumference. But <clears throat> the yeah. central hinge to the northern one is twenty-four thousand eight hundred feet. The circumference of the Earth is twenty-four thousand eight hundred eighty-three miles. 
Mm. And the central hinge to the southern one is 24, 2,400 feet in the 24 hours in a day. Uh, yeah. Whether that's of any significance whatsoever, who knows. Devil's arrows are almost exactly 54 degrees north. Now, 54 degrees just sounds a number, doesn't it? But it's actually, if you work it out, it's 60% of the way from the equator to the pole. Hmm. Um, and that makes it 15% of 360 degrees as well. Mm -hmm. So it's a significant number. Yeah. <clears throat> Doesn't uh, um, Giza and Karnak and Stonehenge also have these almost exact um Giza said fractions of the uh, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't find it for Stonehenge or Karnak. Mm. But maybe I didn't look hard enough. <laughs> well, um, I, I think that the Stonehenge one I only heard recently um, through that Howard Crowhurst, and he, he was saying that it's that the the number is like it's the it's the it's the perfect ratio between feet and meters. So, so it, it, it's so the Stonehenge, where Stonehenge is on the <clears throat> earth, expresses the ratio between feet and meters. Wow, which <laughs> does not seem like a coincidence either. But yeah, so I'm really not surprised that 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 these are marked in a similar way as well. I mean, yeah. I think this is significant as well. So, from the latitude, from 54 degrees. Uh, the <coughs> winter solstice sunrise um, is 45 degrees from due south, so 135 degrees, and that shows it actually rising. Mm -hmm. uh, and the major lunar standstill is 30 degrees from due south. So any other latitude, those angles would obviously vary um, and they wouldn't have significance in terms of numbers. Sorry, can we um, pause a minute? Yeah. Thank you. So between these, uh, these significant celestial events and the angles, we have significant numbers. Mm. Uh, and as I say, if you go further north or further south, you lose that significance. Um, so it's the only um, place, the only latitude in the Northern Hemisphere where you would have this uh, relationship where you could draw a line and look one way along it to see the uh, solstice sunrise and the other way along it to see the lunar standstill. <coughs> We know that Canaban is significant because it's all the barn and uh, that uh, aligns to the southern standstill of um, Aldebaran. And it's the only latitude where if you align the whole thing uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the summer solstice from Ripon Cathedral, that would happen. So if they wanted... If they knew about the end of the Younger Dryas, and if they wanted to uh, commemorate it, they came to Yorkshire specifically because they knew that uh, it had significance at, at that position. So the uh, location of the monuments has been carefully planned and it uses advanced astronomy and cartography. It's my opinion. Right, so how are we doing for time? How long have you got? That's about, I'm, I'm fine. About Rebecca, another I'm half happy. hour. Yeah, 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 yeah great. Really. Yeah. So we've talked quite a lot about this core complex here. Uh, so we've got these, the hinges and the stones there. Um, in addition to this, the, uh, the central complex, there's another nine hinges uh, and a big stone. The big stone is at Rudstone, and there's also a hill, which is Claro Hill, which has never been considered to be an ancient monument, by the way. 
Um, but I think I can't actually prove it, but I think I can show that it is part of the complex. Uh, so if we just quickly whiz through these, so at at or near Rudstone, we have uh, a henge called, these are, these are all henges, by the way, uh, Maiden's Grave, which I think is a great name. <laughs> Romantic. <laughs> uh, Paddock Hill. Um, those are pretty much on the same um, uh, line of latitude. Longitude? Latitude. Uh, there's a henge at Catterick. And oh. I've had trouble fitting Catrick into the design. There's one at Cinderby, <coughs> which, if you're looking for a wider Orion map, would be uh, certainly should be considered, but it doesn't seem that accurate, so I discounted it. <coughs> uh, there's something at place called Tenlands, which is very close to Canaban. Um, and they think it was a henge, but it's sort of a, uh, not even a crop circle now, just a few remains. I think we can link that in uh, to a, an alignment that runs from Tenlands through Paddock Hill to Maiden's Grave. <coughs> it's Absolutely an exact line. Uh, if we could then go across, so remember I was saying about the moors, so you can see the moors starting down here. So Ripon is about there. So we're right in the middle of the moors at Castle Dykes and uh, another one at Yarnbury. I've got something to say about Yarnbury. Uh, one there and the final one at Ferry Bridge. So that's the whole complex. So there's a fair bit of work gone into all of that. Mm. Obviously, these megalithic people had too much time on their hands. <laughs> so let's just talk about Claro Hill. I first found Claro Hill and somebody remarking on it um, when they were talking about ancient maps. And uh, I, my attention to it was drawn because it's about four miles south of the Devil's Arrow. So does it have any significance? <clears throat> the only picture I could find of it was this one here. And you can see there's a house there. So mm. my guess is that it's at least twice as high as the house. They're probably a bit truncated off the top there. Uh, so it's probably about 60 foot high. And this was the map I found. So that's not the same house, by the way. No. Um, so that's where the hill is. <clears throat> now, what's happened since is that somebody's bunged. So that was the Great North Road. Somebody's bunged a uh, dual carriageway right through the middle of the thing. <laughs> so it's very difficult to find exactly where it is. But from a bigger map of that, I got it down to within a few feet, I think. Right. So Claro Hill was an ancient and revered place long before the Vikings. Have they put Vikings in there because of the name Claro? Is that is that meant I to don't, be no, a Danish I don't, name? No, that's, that's the reference at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, as I say, I've approximated its location from old maps. Mm. So, is it Yorkshire Sil Silsbury Hill? Yeah. yeah. Certainly got that profile, hasn't it? Yeah, it yeah. has, hasn't it? Uh, and as I said, from the pick, it's probably about 60 foot high, so it's not as big as Silsbury Hill, obviously, but... It's... Still quite a quite a mound though. Yeah. 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 I mean somebody's put a lot of work into it. Mm, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> so as I say, I think it's part of the uh, entire um, design. I don't know why. Why would you have an earth mound? A stack of uh, hinges and some stones. Right, so the big stone. Rudstone monolith. It's the largest monolith in uh, Britain, so it's 25 feet tall, at least 40 tonnes. It's reputed to be as long underground as it is above. Well, whether that's just 
a tale. You don't mm -hmm. know. Do you? As I said, it's a very ancient site. Now, <clears throat> Rudstone is known for quite a few things, actually. So it's part of the what's called the Newton what uh, what. World Newton Triangle, which is reputed for fairies and werewolves and zombies and dragons. <laughs> a meteorite fell there and five ley lines go through it. So the gypsy race is um it's in it's in a choke area, so typical of choke areas you have vanishing rivers. Uh and it's supposed to flow. <clears throat> to signify disasters are going to occur. So it flowed a lot in the Napoleonic period and in the English Civil War of the uh, late 1100s and um, just before the First World War. So there's a tale that if you've listened to the, um, the fairies episodes on... Um, Snake Brothers. There's a mm. tale that's told about um, someone walking past a mound and uh, there were some fairies drinking and wanting to share the drink. Yeah. And um, the guy managed to st steal the chalice and ran away with it. And uh, the tale is that it got passed to the King of Scotland. Now, that mound is Doubleby Hill. Uh, d d d which you'll see on the next picture, actually. Um, so the mound is certainly there. Um, tales of werewolves, as I said before, the the wolves they they still gave a bounty for wolf heads in up to two hundred and fifty years ago in this area. So there were a lot of wolves around there. Oh golly! <clears throat> Uh, but there are tales that people still see phantom wolves. Mm. Uh, the, as far as I can tell, the original uh, stories of living dead were written by a monk in the late 1100s, uh, and he came from this area. So he wrote about uh, zombies and uh, people rising from their graves and stuff mm. like that. Interesting. And there's a, there's a fun fun story that um, uh, Shannon tells about the dragon on uh, uh, that lived near Filey. Filey's this uh, bit up here. Yeah. Um. Who? The, the the dragon was a real pain to the locals. Chased the girls, that sort of thing. Might have been an old man, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, parking is uh, a sort of oat cake made with uh, uh, sugar and, um, uh, you know what treacle is? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's all mixed together and baked, and it's really sticky. <clears throat> so the tale is that uh, someone gave the, uh, the the dragon parking and it stuck its uh, teeth together, uh, and uh, they, they then managed to kill it and dump its body off fairly breed. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind. <laughs> yeah, next time we come across a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> so, but if you're interested in uh, folk tales, the new mm -hmm. mock triangle <laughs> might be of interest. To you. That's great. Yeah, I like that. So, within the Rudstone area, there are four circuses and uh, two henges, uh, both of them just to the north, which we've seen on that other picture. So, here mm -hmm. are the circuses in. Um, uh, in white, I can't pick up any uh, real alignments from those. Just funny angles. Don't know what they are, um, and I don't think anyone else does either. Mm. So the the two hinges that we've already seen, there's Paddock Hill here and uh, Maiden's Grave there. There's a, a long barrow there, and that's Willy How where the fairies are. Mm. <clears throat> now, the Rudstone mon mon monolith is exactly east of the Devil's Arrows North Stone. It's within six feet. Oh, God. Oh. Well, it's a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 
So, like the devils, arrows reached only 60% of the angular distance from the equator to the pole. It's 10% of the Earth's circumference from the North Pole. Mm. It has this winter solstice um, at 30 degrees and the uh, lunar standstill at 45 degrees. So, all the same things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, if I draw a line from... Uh, the Devil's Arrows to Rudstone. Um, it's 44 miles long. And if we assume that instead of going to the Northern Stone, uh, it went to the centre, which if you remember, I did say we don't really know where the centre mm. is, uh, but it's less than 200 feet out, if that was what the intention was. But now that I... I've done a bit more work on alignments and such like. I actually think that because the stones represent stars, there might have been some significance <coughs> in making it line up with a northern stone rather than the central one. I don't know what that significance is, but it might have done. Mm. So we can say that Rudstone is an equinoctial marker for the Yorkshire complex. Couldn't see it from there, even if you look. Little bloody big fire at Rudstone, you never see it. <laughs> but it is right on the line of the rising sun on the uh, on the equinox. <clears throat> right, Jan, Jan Brahenge, which we mentioned on that previous slide, it's no more than a crop mark now. Mm. That's a picture of it. Uh, so this is 23.4 miles west of the Devil's Arrows. And you might say, why am I mentioning it? Well, if I now draw a line from Yarnborough, it passes almost a 1,000 feet from uh, the Devil's Arrows to the south. Uh, also misses those other monuments. But once again, it's very close. Mm. So why does it miss the Devil's Arrows? And it misses because of the equinox sunset. So if I draw a line from the Devil's Arrows to Yarnborough, yeah, Yarnbury, uh, this is the wrong way around, actually. The Devil's Arrows is there and there. Mm. So this is the line of sight from the Devil's Arrows. Right. And you can see that it tops out at that hill. Yeah, you got high I've high looked high. at that hill. I can't find any markers on it. Mm. <clears throat> so the angle... From the Devil's Arrows to Amber is 268.7 degrees. And the observable high point is uh, 250 metres higher, uh, and it's 17.8 kilometres away. And that gives an angle from the Devil's Arrows of 0.8 of a degree. So because of those hills, the sunset and the um, equinox is actually on that exact line. So Yambury is an equinoctial marker for the Devil's Arrows as well. I love how pragmatic these people are as well. Mm. You know, it's not just to do with how precise it is on paper, whether they even use blue yeah. paper or not, <laughs> but it, it's it's also the practicality of how it works on the ground as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's still very yeah. much built into it. That's brilliant. Yeah, yeah nice. Now, if you remember, I did say that the Devil's Arrows don't have any um, astronomical alignments that I can see that are sort of close enough to be able to see uh, the object rising and setting above a marker. But it does have a number that are distant from it. So we've seen two of them here, so Rudstone and Yambra. <clears throat> and there's another one that is even more interesting later on, but not for today. So that's the sunset. So it's coming down from, sun always comes down from the south or rises towards the south. Mm -hmm. And if you could read that, you'd see it's 268.7, and at that point it's one degree above the horizon. So it'd just be cutting the horizon. Nice. 
So we can say that these equinoctial markers don't have to be visible from the observing fight sites. In some cases, uh, the marker is near enough so that if you lit a fire there, you'd be able to see it, but that's not the case with Rudstone no. or um, uh, Yambri. Uh, so does it mean that the lines of the markers have some other significance? Well, mm. I don't know, and no. I've not found out. So now things get a bit strange. Hugh Newman and others claim that they have found evidence of measurements of a metre. Now, a metre is one fourth, 40,000 of the Earth's circumference. We know that they knew what the Earth's circumference was from the previous work, so that's not a surprise. A metre is also about as close as you can get to uh, a unit of measure that fits the human body, so it's just over three feet. Yeah. Hmm. So if you were going to use something on the Earth's based on the earth size, something of one forty thousandth would make sense. Yeah. So the distance from Yambra to uh, Yambra to Rudstone is 108 kilometers. The relative size of the sun and the moon and their distance from the earth are related by a factor of 108 and it's also one and a half degrees of precession. So mm -hmm. you've probably seen this before, but... Uh, Mm. These these oh. numbers are exact, but um, so 108 Earths go in the sun, um, 108 moons go between the Earth and the moon, 108 suns between the sun and the Earth. Um, 432,000 miles again as well. No. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. The distance from the Devil's Arrows to Rudstone is 70.74 uh, kilometres. Now, we think that one degree of precession is 71.66 years. But uh, if you look at the Indian texts, um, they had the uh, uh, great year as being 25,461 years. And if you take that you get almost exactly the figure that we see there, 70.7 something. Golly. I thought I'd worked it out here, but I, but I haven't. So. <laughs> but it is almost exactly, it's about 70.7. So working from the same hymn sheet there, you think yeah. in India and in, and in Yorkshire. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. That's crazy. Now, I all be coincidence, <laughs> but the number of number of uh, coincidences are beginning to build up on all of this. Uh, so, could the site have been reference uh, built built to reference the size of the Earth and the Sun and the rate of precession? Maybe. Right, I think that finishes us for today, so I've got a bit of a summary. So today then we've looked at the reason why the angle um, from the Devil's Arrows to Thornborough is 141 degrees, and there's a possibility of it being several of those. Uh, my favourite by far is the Ripon Cathedral site, but I also like Alderbarn. Mm. Uh, the simplest by far is that they just laid it out from the stars and made a uh, error of about four degrees. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm not at all convinced by the moon. What? Uh, we also looked at whether the position of the Devil's Arrows is in any any way significant, and I think it is. Mm. And then we had a brief look at the wider area of uh, Yorkshire, which Rudstone, Yambri, and leading on to procession. Next episode, then. You've heard the book, The Old Strike Track, I guess. Mm -hmm. So... I look at alignments and my view of them and uh, possible alignments. 
I look at Arbelo and Castle Reed. Arbelo is nice. quite interesting, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, and something I've called All the Devil's Works. Pete, people know that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I've really been interested in sites called After the Devil. Mm. And, ah, um, yes. That's that. That's paid a, a few benefits. <laughs> Oh, where's yeah. the town? There's a town, isn't there? The devil's basement. Of... Anyway, <laughs> Stop it. sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, but that's the thing is that you, you, you start thinking about these places called devils and quite a few crop up. And yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. There's a lot of. I can think of a few now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a really yeah. yeah a really I, good... I I won't spoil what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I won't <laughs> spoil what I'm gonna say either. That's just exciting. Great, I... thanks for that, Lai. That was great. Okay, and that's it. Brilliant. <laughs> thanks, nice. thanks, pinch pinch that picture. I I give my thanks to uh, Mr. Dixon or Mrs. Dixon or whoever it is. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that's a nice one they got there. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, brilliant. I'd love to see. I like the way you said um, you find a church by the monolith. There isn't a monolith by the church, yeah. there's a, but there's a church <laughs> by the monolith. <laughs> yeah. Well, the church obviously came. Yeah, it came later. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, <laughs> no one wanted to move that rock, did they? <laughs> <laughs> no. I suppose they could have built it into the wall, couldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Oh, good. It's absolutely. I'd love to see that one. I'd love yeah. to see that. It's yeah, it's enormous. I yeah. mean, one th one thing I didn't see actually was uh, you know that one of Ripon Cathedral Tower with the solstice lines drawn on it, hmm. and I got that. Uh, oh, I got to look at that from watching one of Randall's things. Oh right, okay. And he was talking about. I think it was Chartres Cathedral. And uh, how on the, I think it was the, I think it was the equinox, summer equinox. Sorry, not the summer equinox, summer solstice. Mm. Um, that there's a hole in the uh, glass window, the huge glass window on it. There's a hole, and on the uh, summer solstice, the sun shines directly through there and onto a specific stone on the floor. And I thought, well, that sounds interesting. I wonder if there's anything similar at Ripon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's very difficult to tell, actually, just from right. looking at uh, you know it from the uh, the air. Mm. I think that's the type of thing you could only tell from being there. Absolutely. Um, um, but then I saw, I thought, well. The angles of that tower have got to be odd. There's something I've put about them. Mm. <laughs> yeah, thing. nice. That's a, that's a great one. The fact that you know that oh, it, you know, it's a little bit off east west. We can say the medieval architects had a bit of an accident <laughs> there. You know, they just got it off. Yeah. But the fact that it makes the equinox alignment more accurate, I think, yeah. is Whoa. that's fascinating. That's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think it's a cathedral in France. I think I remember this from. Um, from the, the the builders of ancient mysteries films um there's a cathedrals in france where you have like a door and a window next to each other yeah. and the window is exactly a royal cubit width and the door is exactly a meter wide all oh, right yeah and it's you know 300 years before napoleon and <laughs> um of course i think uh, robert Baval says that bit that's missing from the top of the great pyramid yeah if you you filled a sphere in that in that thing, it would be it would have exactly a meter diameter to it, um, and I think the meters represented elsewhere in the Great Pyramid as well. Yeah, it's supposed to be, isn't it? Uh... Yeah. Um, and then again, um, Crow Howard Crow, 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 Howard Crowhurst was saying that the um, the external circumference of the sarsen stones. So not, you know, yeah. obviously you could measure inside and outside yeah. and that external circumference I... is exactly 100 metres. Yeah, I can remember reading that. Yeah. yeah, which is which is crazy. So, yeah, that, that definitely definitely exists elsewhere, absolutely. Nice. Um, but, yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah. I Thanks, mean, the, as I was saying to Adam, I think, when you went there, Pete, I, uh, I go through periods when I just think, 
This is impossible. They can't possibly have done all this. <laughs> so, yeah. so I just go away from it for a while, and but it but it lures you back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. I I think I think when you get a hunch about something, it's there's something to. I I'm, not, I'm just convinced now. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's correct. Yeah, even if it's just for yourself, you know. Hmm. Well, I'm absolutely convinced about the star map. I'm probably 75% convinced about Ripon Cathedral. Um, and I think it needs, I mean, I think it's good doing this because I think the ideas need to be out there for people to discuss and debate. Yeah. And if somebody comes back and says, oh, you made a made a mistake laying it out or, you know, because it's spherical ge geometry that can never work or whatever. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, if they do, they do. And at least we'll know. Um, but you know. It seems like up to you, people were stuck on these lunar alignments and these, you know, that, that, that sort of V shape you're showing us. Yeah. And, and they couldn't really get out of that out of that wedge really that was it that was but they didn't i mean it's not their fault they didn't have the technology no 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 you're right and that's why i've given the idea a name <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah maybe maybe they'll teach it in archaeology courses one day, <laughs> one day. <laughs> but, but there you go <laughs> let's see in a few thousand years maybe <laughs> That was great. Yeah. So, yeah, nice. thanks for that, guys. Yeah, yeah no thank you. Yeah, we can stop there, I think. Yeah. So. Hi, folks. I hope you enjoyed that. Me and Adam really did. <laughs> I thought it was fantastic. And hopefully we'll have um, Martin back again to finish off. Um, maybe one or two more videos but possibly not until after christmas now but we'll we'll see and we'll let you know um we're still hoping to put one together on adam's little london trip um a few of the sites that you saw there um and then i think the last thing that's coming up is at christmas hopefully we'll be uh contributing a program for the britain's hidden history channel as a little christmas special uh for the channel so um We'll see how that goes. <laughs> uh, but we're looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, we hope you're enjoying what we're putting out so far. And if you've got any suggestions, always always keep in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Absolutely. Go All on. right. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. See you next time. Take care.